what is going on you guys i am coming to you today with the worst upgrades in armada i'm going to talk about slot by slot i'm going to go you know which basically is the worst one for each slot and um they in some cases what could potentially make them a little bit better uh before i go any further though i do want to remind you guys there is another round of the giveaway going on right now so if you would like to win an expansion of your choice in the form of a 20 dollars cool stuff gift card all it takes is to become a subscriber and leave a comment on this or one of my videos. It's as simple as that. So let's jump right in. I want to uh, start things off with the officer slot. And that is going to be, uh, it's actually kind of a toss up between weapons liaison and the other liaison. But ba basically these liaisons are just, just terrible. Uh, one of the things that makes them so bad is the fact that they're taking up the officer slot. So right now they're actually worse than they've ever been. Uh, the the liaisons are just terrible. They, um, you know, officers right now are at an all time high. It, putting an officer on a ship, you really have to think because you're missing out on all the other great great officers. So even the fact that they only cost three, which is kind of cheap, is not enough to save them. Um, I think these liaisons were put into the game at the very very beginning of the game when people had no idea what, how to plan commands and how to do these sort of things so it was kind of like something of an insurance policy when you really didn't know how to play or what you were going to do and i think because of that they really don't have any place in the game today um so and and, and the fact and the other thing that makes them bad is that you can't do anything with them right it, it like, if you're just a regular ship activating, if you don't have defense tokens, you can't do anything. So before you reveal a command, you can spend a commands token to change your command to a different command. So, you know, in, 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 in the weapons case, it's either concentrate fire or uh, squadron, and the other guy, it's nav or engineer. But um, you have to have a token already. So that means, in a lot of cases, in, in, granted, there's some cases where you can manufacture a way to give them a token. Just, just so. He, but the thing is that, in one case, you had to have taken a token that you didn't use last turn. So you already made a mistake last turn, and you're making a mistake this turn. You know, So you have to screw up two turns in a row, so you have to have two wasted commands just to fix one dial. So it's like, it's so bad. Um, or, the, the, granted, there is always the chance that, well, maybe I'm using um, Tarkin, or I have a, you know, a, a, a flotilla passing tokens, or something like that. Well, now you've put in a whole really expensive commander or a whole another ship designed just to fix your bad command and your mistake. So um, you should never plan to fail. You should always plan your build. Well, what happens if everything goes right? How can I maximize doing everything correctly rather than plan to fail? That's my personal opinion. And that's one of the reasons why I put these guys at the bottom. I don't think they're flexible. I think they're a crutch and a bad crutch at that. And they're taking up a great, great slot. Moving forward, um, let's talk about the support team. So the support, support team was kind of a tough one because, uh, you know, there's a lot of good ones, but there are a few that weren't that great. I, I decided to go with nav team because they're, a, you know, mid-level expensive. Um, if you're... You know, they don't, they only do anything, something if you're spending a NAV token. Again, tokens are in a place right now where they're just not very good. Um, there are, you know, Wave 7 started to make that a little bit better, right? Wave 7 started to make it a little bit better that, yeah, okay, there is a little bit better use for tokens, but it's not there yet. It's definitely not. So um, this guy says that, you know, your, your NAV tokens can either change your speed by one or increase your yaw value by one. So it's not, it's not letting your NAV token change your speed and your yaw it's, it's saying well if you do it for yaw then you don't get to do it for speed and while there's some value for that you know the, and, and this isn't one of the worst upgrade slots in general because most of these are actually have a use um in in this case you're better off just doing the nav command because then you get this you know you get to do both uh so again i'm not really crazy about nav team it just you know if you have to have a token already and, you know, or if you did the nav command, you don't want to take a token, you know, and, and how many times do you really, like, maybe, you, all right, you can make an argument that, yes, there's some ships you could stack and do both and maybe get two extra yaw, but really, I, I don't, you know, I don't know, I think that's a little bit far-fetched. There, yeah, Granted, there's a couple of cases where that's really useful, but it seems to be very similar to the idea of bad planning, because in most ships, you just don't need that much extra yaw. I could make an argument maybe for the Architans. And the thing is, I'm one of the biggest proponents of flying Architans, and uh, I still wouldn't use these guys on Architans. You know, I mean, like, I can see it 
Like maybe if you're running Tarkin and a whole bunch of Architons and you put Navs out there and you just want to give them the extra yaw. Sometimes. Sometimes. But then, again, you have to run the more expensive Architons to get those upgrade slots. Anyway, just about everything else is better and has more uses. Let's talk about weapons team. Oh, sensor team. Oh, sensor team. What did you guys do when you went to go learn about sensors? These guys are terrible. This is one of the worst cards in the game. Um, so, f first off, let's talk about the ability. While attacking, you may exhaust this card and spend a die to change one of your dice to a face with an accuracy icon. So here's here here's what happens. So you have to this this only has any use on a ship with a ton of dice, an absolute ton of dice. Um, you can't really use this on a ship with like you know you can't use this on a ship with two dice. You just can't, right? Because um, you know like a hammerhead for example, you just can't because you're only rolling two dice. And you get to you have to spend one of those dice, and you turn the other one to an accuracy. You can make the argument that you really can't use this on a ship with three dice, because at best you're going to have a single die remaining. Oh, and by the way, this doesn't do anything to help that one die. So you went from three dice to now just one dice, you know, one die uh, effectively of damage. So that's bad. What you the only use that you could have this for is a ship with a ton of dice. But here's the problem. That upgrades. There's it's it's in this in this slot where every other upgrade is way more suited to a ship with a ton of dice. Gunnery teams, Kateco and Sholin, you know, ordnance experts, all kinds of great options in this particular slot. Um, and this one has it has so much of a cost. First off, it costs five, and while five isn't the most expensive, it's way too expensive for a card that already has several other costs baked into it. Taking up the weapons team slot is a cost. It's an opportunity cost. Also, you have to exhaust the card. You have to exhaust this card. Um, so that alone, you know, you can only do it for one of your shots. So if you had somebody double arced, you can't use it twice, uh, which is silly because it's taking up the spot of your gunnery team. If you were lucky enough to have maybe an ISD uh, with this guy, or maybe a Simon with spinal armament and sensor team, Right, and somebody actually chose, you know, uh, gunnery, uh, advanced gunnery. Well, then you should be able to use this guy twice. You think, is like all the planets went into alignment, and you actually get, you know, a decent good shot. But no, no, you can't. Not even in that case. And then you also, when you exhaust the card, you also have to spend a die, and you have to changing another die. So, for example, let's say you were a three damage. Let's say, you know, let's say you were an assault frigate, and you had three red dice. You rolled, let's, and let's just say you rolled perfectly, maybe against that flotilla or something, right? You're trying to kill that flotilla. You rolled double, double, double. Three red dice, all two damage. Six damage coming out of this thing from the side arc. Well, you'd have to exhaust sensor team. You'd have to spend one of your doubles. You'd have to change one of your other doubles to an accuracy. And then all you have left is the other double. So you went from six damage all the way down to two damage. And oh, by the way, now you know, and, and all you get is the one accuracy. So, so you know, I can target your scatter, but now you can just cancel the uh, the double <laughs> that I have remaining. So much wrong with this card. It has way too steep a price. Um, now, what would make this better? If new things came out that made accuracies better, if if there was more you could do with an accuracy. Um, you know, or if there became, you know, like, I, if there was new cards that, for example, took advantage of accuracy, or new ships that had a really, really powerful defense token, um, but that were vulnerable otherwise, kind of like flotillas, although granted, even now, and that, that was one of the uses for these guys, was to find, to, to guarantee that accuracy if you really needed to kill a flotilla, but now you don't even really need to kill flotillas, because you can just ignore them, blow up the other ships, and table the opponent, so... This is just bad in so many other ways. But if, you know, maybe they put scatter on, on gunships or something like that, then maybe this would have a little more of a place at the table. But, boy, the cost is way too too steep to guarantee that accuracy, which you can, you're better off just trying to do re-rolls, and maybe you'll get one that way, and then keep your dice. <sighs> Quad laser turrets. All right, so this one is not even that bad of a card. It's just, I think, the worst in slot here for offensive retrofit, because there's a lot of, 
there's a lot of really good offensive retrofits. I mean, to be frank, there there really is. Um, you know, you could make an argument for Phylon tractor beams, maybe, but I I do like them on flotillas because it gives flotillas even more disturbance. Um, and you know maybe rapid launch bays, but I really like rapid launch bays because I think that's how the game should have been all along. I think if they were to make an Armada 2.0, like rapid launch bays should be baked into every ship. Um, every sh squadron should start out on the ships if possible. Um, that being said, uh, quad laser turrets is is all right, but the problem is every time I've ever tried to use quad laser turrets, they simply send their squadrons to attack somebody else first, and so it's like. Unless you're running it on every single ship, and then you then you're adding a premium to your fleet cost of like maybe 15 points or even more in some cases, uh, you know it's just just you know for, if, and you, you, the value you get you get isn't really all that much. It isn't, especially with the blue die. Uh, you know, you're gonna miss anyway. But but that being said, you know it's okay. If there was more stuff that synergized with this, I, and, and granted there are. Some like if you've got double offensive retrofit, you could combo this with point defense reroute, you know, or callus. There's a few things that can potentially synergize with it, and that's what I have done when I've tried to run. I've tried to run like callus and quad laser turrets. They just don't send their squadrons to attack that ship. They let their their ships focus on the big ship that has the combo against squadrons, and they just ignore that ship and they send the squadrons to kill everybody else, and they just take all of their other ships and focus on this guy, and it's a, it's just not that great. Not terrible, because there's uses for it, and it could potentially get better the more, um, you know, crew and other upgrades that synergize with squadron attacks um, could definitely, you know, could definitely become a thing. Oh, defensive retrofit. This one I actually have mixed emotions on, but it's def it's got to be cluster bombs, because just about everything else in defensive retrofit has a, a value, has a purpose, is it gets some, some type of regular play. Um, cluster bombs definitely takes the place of at least least used right now uh, and there's a couple reasons for this so um, it's not that expensive it's five points it says after a squadron performs an attack against you even if you're destroyed you may discard this card to roll four blue dice and that squadron suffers one damage for each hit or crit icon rolled so the problem is it's a one-time use not really that great you know especially for your defensive retrofit and it's only if you get attacked by a squadron and then you only have a chance to do damage um, like if it had like a, a minimum damage, like if it had a minimum of two, like if you rolled less than, you know, granted, you're, you, statistically you're probably likely to roll three damage here. Law of averages, uh, you got two accuracy on each die, you're probably going to roll three damage. So what, you're going to kill a TIE Fighter? Now, what's kind of cool is this isn't considered an attack, so that much is nice. But really, it's not, it's not very good. Um, I had thought of trying to work this into a build a while back where everybody had cluster bombs. So now all of a sudden, if you sent your squadrons in, you'd really be at a, a little bit of a disadvantage here. You're like, well, crap, any, any, any time one of my squadrons attacks, they can, they can potentially kill me. But the fact is, it's only a one-time use. So you, you, know, you have to save this for that ace or for somebody who has scatter or who, somebody who can mitigate damage that's coming in because of the fact that it's straight up damage and it's not an attack. But still, one-time use makes it really hard. I would rather it be less dice. Um, well, I mean, I, then at the same time, though, then it turns into just counter, and they'll just ignore that. But this one, in theory, you could combo this with counter, and uh, and if you had it on everybody. But one of the reasons you can't really put this on everybody because it only comes with the home one. And how many home ones are you really gonna buy? I mean, you don't really want four home ones for a four-ship fleet, you know. I just, you know Again, that's and that's not necessarily why it's bad, but the, the biggest reason that it's bad is it's a single use, um, and you know it's not that good, and it takes up a really good slot. Ah, uh, ordnance is actually a really good slot. There's a lot of very very good cards in ordnance, so this one was a little tricky. I decided to go with rapid reload, um, generally because it's um, you know black dice ships. You more often than not end up going front arc so you can like point directly at where you're trying to fly um, and and you're going to get more out of other black dice upgrades like like if the two in the front for example way better option or all those fancy crit stuffs way better options um, rapid reload you know you're getting one on your left and your right and you're usually it's so unlikely you're going to be able to fire both of those you're it's so unlikely that you're going to get two black dice in one turn as a result of this just probably isn't going to happen. 
um, you know, like you put this on like an MC30 or something, that's fine. Are you going to really thread the needle between two huge ships and get take advantage of that? It's, it's very unlikely. Um, so th there's that. Um, the ship that's most likely to be able to, you know, get those side arc black dice shots in with the most ease is going to be a demolisher, but there's better cards for a demolisher. So, um, you know, this one is just, while it's not terrible and it does have some uses, it's certainly cheaper than your front arc version. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's still very expensive for just one die that you can only use at close range and only out of, you know, your left and right arcs and, and in, a, in a slot where there's just a lot better stuff. Let's jump into Ion Cannons. This one, all right, so Ion Cannons was tough. Ion, Ion Cannons was very tough because there are um, there are a couple of kind of lousy ones. I mean, there's a lot of very good ones in here, uh, but I went with NK7, and it was, it was tricky because I was also really thinking about MS1. The MS1s are the ones that let you uh, spend your crit to choose and exhaust uh, somebody's upgrade cards. And I didn't go with that one because that one is only two points. It was very, very cheap, and it is at least situationally amazing. It can be situationally very, very good. Um, however, so many of those upgrades apply specifically to mitigating an incoming defense, so it, uh, it's more of an annoyance. But, but this one is so expensive. It really is. Ten points. Oh, it's rough. It's really rough. And, and, and the other thing is um, the application of doing this card. You know, it, because it's blue crit... Um, you know, you can exhaust this card, so you don't get to do it twice. Again, this is a, a one-time only, or, you know, once per, per round card. And you're going to force the defender to choose and discard one of their defense tokens. Um, so, they get to choose. And that's, like, this would be better if you got to choose, absolutely. Um, but they have to choose. And since the crit effect, they are already going to have spent defense tokens. Um, the, so that mitigates the effectiveness of this, because they can... So say, oh, well, okay, I will redirect, and, oh, now I have to, okay, no problem. I will just, you know, spend the one that I already spent, disc or discard the one that I already spent. So this way you're getting an orange token instead of a green token. You're probably never going to get a green token out of this because they get to choose. So that being said, you know, they're always going to choose the one that would hurt them the least. And so that really puts a hard cap on just how effective this can be. On top of that, you have Sloan out now, too, which completely trumps any need to do stuff like this. I, I, again, that's my opinion, but, uh, but yeah, it's not a very good card. Next up, Turbo Lasers. I had to go with the heavy Turbo Laser turrets. There is a couple of Turbo Lasers that are also not very good, um, but most are pretty good. Most are very good, and, 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 and I think some of the ones that weren't as good are starting to get a little bit better. Um, certainly an argument could be made for quad turbo laser cannons because they're 10 points are very very expensive um, and you know in that one is very very specific you have to have an accuracy but you can get two accuracy but there's ways to combo with that that are very very easy like home one and it can you know having two accuracy can really be helpful against a lot of ships there's really a use for that even though if it is it does require a specific build there's a really good use for it that being said heavy turbo laser turrets there's much less of a use for. Um, so while attacking, the, def uh, the the brace defense effect cannot reduce damage by more than one unless it is the only defense token spent by the defender during the attack. So I'm attacking you with these. You want to brace? No problem. You want to brace and redirect? Well, you can only reduce damage by by one with brace, and then you can still redirect. Which means if I'm attacking you with a small ship with a, like only a handful of dice you might not even notice a difference. And maybe one extra damage gets through or something like that. Um, worst case, this is saying, oh, well, you can't redirect. Or you can redirect if you want, but you, your brace will be less effective. You're, you know, I, I just feel like this card is totally, just totally trumped by uh, XI7s, which just says you can't redirect, you can't redirect um, more than a single point of damage. Because that one's just more flat out. And since, so, you know, so many more ships seem to have uh, redirect than brace. You know, the only time that this is, the only time heavy turbo laser turrets is really useful is against a ship like the Nebulon or the Raider that don't have redirect, and that they may want to brace and also um, evade. Something like that is that's useful. If you want to brace and evade, then it's useful. The only thing that could make this um, potentially more 
better is if like in a meta where um, people are using multiple crit options and you, you're forced to run like damage control officer. And if you start seeing everybody run damage control officer, this one at that point might have some actual value because at that point, then you'd be like, oh, well, now do I want to brace because I won't be able to redirect or contain, you know. But then again, you but the, it, that's what kills this one is that it still lets you do it. You can still brace to reduce the damage by one. So it's like, it's, it's still letting you do it. It's not really that effective. All right, next up. Um, so our flotillas, um, they have their little support thing. And I had to go with jamming field. Our flotillas, all of those are have a use. And, a, and even jamming field has a use. Um, and the idea is, you know, like you send your squadrons up ahead to attack a little bit, but not too far. And then you move in. So when they're, like, you, it takes some finesse. But you can make this work you know if you just move your squadrons a short distance enough that you're going to move the flotilla in there to cover them um after that but still it's it's limiting it can hurt you too so it's not really that great there is a use for it but most of the time there's better use uh, for this particular upgrade upgrade slot and their other other cards are just usually a little bit better but again this isn't useless it's just worse than slot oh uh, fleet fleet support our fleet command. Why? Well, I'm, I'm flip flopping a couple of the names. Anyway, um, I had to go with shields to maximum. I like shields to maximum. Um, you've got basically one command for every command token. You've got your shield, you've, or you've got your engineer, you've got your concentrate fire, you've got your nav, and you've got your squadrons. They all have their uses. This one is the hardest, I think, to make work. That's why I put it in worse than slot. Reason being, this one is only good. Because it gives it one shield back to every ship in your fleet. Like, oh, you think, well, that's great. Because yeah, that has the potential to be maybe the best. It has the potential to be. But in reality, your opponents aren't going to just split up their fire. I'm like, oh, all right. Well, I want one ship to take a shot here, one ship to take a shot on this guy, one ship to take a shot on this guy, and one ship to take a shot on that guy. You know, let's, let's bring your whole fleet down gradually, you know, uh, one damage at a time. That's not how the game works. Nobody plays it that way. Um, there are some situations where you might have damage spread out amongst your fleet, maybe through hitting obstacles, for example, and things like that. But it's just not realistic. People want to concentrate fire on one ship and bring one ship down, so this way you have less activation. You know, this way they guarantee points, uh, less ships shooting back at them. You know, so if the you know the game worked in a way that you know one damage was getting sh thrown out on all of your ships all the time, then this would have use. And there is some use to this. Um, sometimes you know you might have two ships that are missing shields, but you're usually not having every ship in your fleet miss shields at the same time. So that's why this one is worse than slot. Also, because it's one point more expensive than the others, except for intensify firepower. You have two sixes and two fives, so it's slightly more expensive. But every other one you can at least employ on every ship or squadron in your fleet um, without having to meet some special criteria of your opponent, you know, dividing up their fire amongst everybody. Um, and for our experimental retrofit, I went with the G8, and some of you might disagree. Uh, the G8 is useful, uh, but it's very expensive and with only four upgrades here it's it, it was a little tricky um, I might have at one point chosen the g7x Gravwell projector uh, and 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 I'll and, I, and we can talk about that the g7x is the one you know when you put that little token anybody who deploys in there it starts at speed zero um, that one's very easy to overcome I've deliberately deployed in there just so I could deploy at speed zero before when I wanted to go very slow um, and, and it's not hard to just do a nav first turn and then just start a speed one. You know, at, at worst, that's just stopping your, your first command or stopping you from banking a token first turn. That being said, G7X has gotten a huge boost um, with the rise of Radis and the rise of Profundity builds because now you have two different ways to run G7X. You can run it to slow somebody down, but you can also run, depending on their fleet, you can um, drop those to place a, like a basically anti-deployment zone which is huge, um, especially if you're a first player. You know, if somebody uses Radis and they drop a ship in and it's within range of the G7X, now all of a sudden that ship is at speed zero, can't spend defense tokens, you get to go first, boom. All right, you might be able to one-shot a ship that can't spend any defense tokens and deploys at speed zero. 
compare that to the G8 now, which costs four times as much because the G G7X is two, you know. Um, and and this one's just it's just not that good. I mean, it's it, again, it's not terrible. It's certainly not terrible. But there's already another tractor beam in the game, right? There's you already have tractor beams, uh, the Phylon, right? Now this one, yes, technically this one can reduce it to speed zero. I understand that that makes this one a little bit different. But boy, this is expensive, and it's taken up a slot. You know, like usually right now between the G7X targeting scramble and grav shift reroute i already have a hard time trying to decide what to put and that's if i take the double slot interdictor this one just doesn't make the cut anymore it just doesn't everything else is too good and too useful and too versatile and this one is like you don't always want to you know slow somebody down sometimes somebody's going really fast and they're going to shoot right past you and sometimes that's a good thing and also this is a temporary if this one could actually slow somebody to speed zero uh, then it'd, it'd be some real. I'd pay ten for it, you know, and and use it some of the time. I wouldn't use it every time, but yeah, you know, it'd be nice. I might, maybe I'd use it all the time. I have to think about that one a little bit. And then titles. Oh, there was a lot of discussion for titles. Insidious had to win, um, and and primarily because why would you take Insidious over Demolisher? Um, you know, and that's that's really. It. Uh, it, it, it's and this was a tough one because there's a couple of there's a there's several that were kind of bad. Um, I'm not a fan of Relentless for the Star Destroyers, just reducing your command. Like I've never really had a problem with command dials, and they have so many other things like Thrawn now. Like I'd, bringing it down to even two, so you still have to plan in advance. If you can't plan in advance, going from three to two isn't going to help you all that much. Um, uh, Centicor for the Architans, um, kind of bad. Like I don't. Relay is good if you're going to be able to be doing relay for like your whole fleet, but this one just gives you two. Uh, still not crazy about Centacore. Um, it has its uses. I'm not a fan of it because the idea is while relay of two, you know, still working board wide is is useful. Um, you, that means you have to have your Architons very close to the enemy fleet, closer probably than it should be, and then it's going to die. Like Architons aren't tough enough to really be flying right in the face of the enemy fleet so that the squadrons can activate while their carrier is at safety. It's they're just they're just not. You know, just bring rogues if you want to do that. Um, and uh, and and then of course uh, for our nebulons we 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 have to talk a little bit about redemption. Redemption was kind of bad also. I mean there's uses for it, but it's eight points, it's the most expensive Nebulon B and, and and that one's really bad too. But still, Insidious has to win out, in my opinion, um, mostly because of the competition and slot. What would make this better is if people were flying more gladiators, and you wanted to have more, you know. But the thing is, if you're flying more gladiators, you're probably going to run that seventh fleet title on them. So again, can't see running an Insidious. Can't see it, especially now with the seventh fleet title. And last, we've got commanders. Uh, I had to go with Garm here. Um, tokens are still kind of bad, and our two token commanders, while you have Garm over here and Tarkin on the other side, Tarkin completely trumps Garm, because Tarkin at least gets to do it every turn. Garm, you know, first and the fifth round. Well, by the fifth round, you've already lost a whole bunch of stuff. It's too late by the fifth round. You know, if it was, you know, the first and third. And the thing is, that what I don't like is the first round. Like... Almost every ship in the game banks a token first round. You know, why do you need to run commands on the first round? You don't need to run squadron command on the first round. I mean, there's a few cases you do. Like if you're doing strategic and you're trying to get some moves um, with with like a eight R Talon combination, then maybe right, um, something like that. But but really, you don't need all these squadrons first turn. It should be like maybe second turn, or maybe even third. If it was like third and fourth turn, Garm would be better, or th or even third and third and fifth maybe, or or second and fourth, something like that. The third turn is probably the turn where you really need the help the most, and it doesn't give it to you. Third and fourth turn are the power turn. Third turns three and turns four. I'm holding up two. I don't know how many fingers I'm holding up, but turns three and turns four are the times when they have always seemed like they would be most helpful to me. And that's what they don't show up for Garm. By turn one, like, what are you going to do? You're just going to sit on them the whole time, and you're not going to bank tokens, so you're wasting your commands. Garm almost seems like he does harm. But that's about, that's about it, guys. And then we're back to weapons liaison again. That's where we started. So those are my worst upgrades in Armada. 
Uh, let me know what you think down in the comments below. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to check out crabock.com. Check out my Discord. Drop off, um, you know, send some pictures of your painted ships up there. We're going to want to do some community kind of uh, feedback where we kind of showcase everybody's uh, paint jobs. And I want to thank you guys so much for watching and have a great day.